Okay, uh, here we go. We have Akbar from Emirates. Akbar. Hello? Yes, Akbar. Hello, Salaam Alaikum, Sheikh. Salaam wa rahmatullah. Uh, hi, Sheikh. Uh, I've got a question regarding a Nikah. Okay. Uh, basically, what it is, um, I have done a Nikah with my fiance. Okay. But without her parents knowing. Okay. But we've done the Nikah after we agreed for us to get engaged, and then we've done an engagement party for the families to come over and there. But then we said, okay, we do a Nikah, so if we see each other, so it's not haram. So I want to find out if that Nikah is valid or not. And also, if it's not valid, the Nikah, if I text her and speak to her on the phone, is that haram or not? Okay. Yep. Okay, I will answer you, inshallah. Thank you, sir. You're welcome, Akhi. You're welcome, sir. Okay. Okay. Uh, Akbar from uh, the Emirates is saying that what's the ruling on getting married without the permission of the guardian, who is the father. The majority of scholars say that this marriage is invalid. The Prophet ﷺ said that there is no marriage valid without the consent of a guardian, al-wali who is, generally speaking, most of the time is the father. So when the Prophet said there is no marriage valid, means that any marriage that takes place is invalid. Now, according to the Hanafi school of thought, they went against the majority of scholars, and most likely they did so because they did not know of the existence of the hadith. Otherwise, we know that Abu Hanifa, may Allah have mercy on his soul, and may Allah Azza wa be pleased with him, who is one of the great scholars of Islam, had he known that this hadith existed, he would definitely follow, have, have followed it. But most likely he did not know of it. And one would say, how would a great Imam such as Abu Hanifa not know of such a hadith? It's very simple. Imam Abu Hanifa did not travel a lot. He was the first of the four uh, uh, Imams. So he did not travel a lot like Al Imam Malik, who was in Medina and all the companions and the followers of the companions and the followers of the followers of the companions were in Medina, so the knowledge was there. Unlike Imam Shafi'i who traveled to different areas, he went to Iraq, he went to Medina, Mecca, Egypt. Unlike Imam Ahmad who is the last of the four Imams who traveled to everywhere just to collect the hadith that the Prophet had said and those who heard it from him went, were scattered in Iraq, in uh, Syria or Sham, in Egypt and in Yemen, and sometimes in Khuras Khurasan, etc. Abu Hanifa said, may Allah have mercy on his soul, whenever the hadith states something, take my opinion, take my verdict and throw it against the wall. So had he known the hadith, he would have followed it. But because he did not know, he thought it logically and he said yes if a woman can sell and buy her wealth then herself is more valuable and she should have control of that and she does not need a wali to represent her but of course the hadith governs all opinions and whenever the prophet says something all other opinions go uh, uh, um, and we do not uh, pay any attention to it so your marriage my friend akbar is invalid now I know that your parents agreed and her parents agreed but they did not make the marriage contract and the marriage contract is easily done the the father the guardian tells you I give you my mar my daughter in marriage you say I accept her marriage this is in the presence of two uh, adult males and that is it she is your wife of course her consent is prior to that but definitely she uh, is already given that, giving that. So once this is done, you're both married. If this is not done, you're not allowed to communicate, whether by SMSs or chatting or Skype or um, whatever, because you're a total stranger. Being your fiance has no value. So if I say that this is my fiance, she's a stranger, a total stranger until the marriage contract takes uh, place.